guys and welcome back to another Mystery Monday video on my channel. Today's video, I tried to make it a little bit longer because I've noticed that all of my videos lately span from like 10 minutes to 15 minutes, but I had, I thought that this case was going to be something a little bit different going into it. And after I started researching it, I did think that it was a really interesting case, although there wasn't that much information. So I do think that this one is going to span at about 15 minutes as well. I do apologize that these videos are quite short. I do plan on making a lot longer ones in the future. I'm working on that, but it does definitely depend on how much information I can find on the case, how long the video is, because some cases do just have very minimal information and that causes for a shorter video. But anyways, with that all being said, let's get right into today's case. Clarence Roberts was born in 1918 and Geneva White was born in 1921. Not too much information is known about these two people's back life except for the fact that Clarence served in World War II, I believe, and Geneva's family was very wealthy and well off growing up, meaning that she lived her entire life pretty luxurious. This couple was married in 1941 and went on to have, I believe, four children. They raised their children in Nashville, Indiana, where they lived for their entire lives, and they were very well known in the community. They were a quite wealthy family. Um, Clarence was previously the county sheriff, and he was also a very important board member at the local bank, and he also owned a local hardware store in Nashville, Indiana at one period. When Clarence stopped being the county sheriff, he was actually replaced by one of his many brothers. Um, again, this family was very wealthy. Clarence had a lot of luxurious cars, I believe a total of four or three, and they were just really, really well off. But unfortunately, this wouldn't last for the family as Clarence had a spending problem and the family became very in debt. So much so that the sheriff, who again was Clarence's brother, actually had to repo two of his luxurious cars. Now, this really, really took a toll on Clarence. He was very depressed. A lot of the people who knew him said that he was visibly, like, just not the same person. He was so sad over the debt that he had caused because his family couldn't live normally and luxuriously like they had been. They were all really, really struggling. He again lost two of his cars. He actually lost his hardware company because of the debt that he was in. He had to sell it. So he was just in a really, really bad place. And again, he was very depressed. And some of his family and friends would even say that he was suicidal. But while the Roberts family was already down on their luck, things would just continue to get worse. In the year 1970, the Roberts family home garage caught on fire. Now, when authorities arrived and put out this fire, inside of the garage they discovered a body. This body was laying next to a melted shotgun, and due to the burn wounds and whatnot, this body was pretty much unrecognizable. There was no way that they could just look at this body and identify who it was. So they had brought this body down to the coroner's office, and the coroner did confirm that this was in fact the body of Clarence Roberts, or at least the coroner believed so. Now you might just think that this is a cut and dry case. Clarence had committed suicide, his body was discovered in the garage and that's that. But unfortunately, that is not all. The Roberts family was given an extremely hard time about Clarence being discovered in the garage, particularly his wife, Geneva. She was given such a hard time, they wouldn't let her cash out on her husband's um, insurance policy because they thought that he had faked his own death or that there was a high possibility that he had faked his own death. There was a lot of rumors going around at the time. Geneva couldn't afford to live up to the standard that she had been living her entire life, so she was forced to move out of her home and into a much lower class community, and she was also forced to take a job in a kitchen. On top of that, she had to cut off many of her friends. She stopped talking to a lot of people who she was quite close with before her husband's passing because they were really, really critical of her and accusing her of knowing that her husband had faked his own death and just she was having a really really hard time her and the kids were just going through it because they were getting such bad criticism because of all of the rumors that were going around in the town about Clarence's death. On November 29th 1980 almost 10 years to the day of the first fire another fire would break out in Geneva Roberts new home. Now once the authorities showed up to the scene and they put out this fire 
This time, there were two bodies discovered within the home. The first one being that of Geneva Roberts and the second one being that of Clarence Roberts. And yes, I didn't mess that up. You heard me correctly. Clarence Roberts' body was discovered in the first fire and his body was also discovered in the second fire almost exactly 10 years after the first one. Just want to apologize because I feel like we're kind of jumping all over the place in this case. But something that immediately crossed my mind after finding out that Clarence Roberts' body was found in both fires was after the first fire, did anybody see him or think that they saw him around town? Because Clarence's entire family lived in the same general area. Geneva, his wife, their children, his brothers, everybody he knew lived in that area. He'd lived there his entire life. So the likelihood of him being recognized if he was still in that area would be high. But the answer to that question is no, nobody had seen him. But again, there was speculation that he had faked his own death. So at first they didn't think that he faked his own death. They thought that he had committed suicide in hopes that his family could cash out on his life insurance policy, which would have been $1.2 million. Again, his family was denied this, but they thought that he had shot himself in the garage and then started the fire somehow. But the body that was found in the garage did not have any bullet wounds, meaning that whoever this body belonged to did not shoot themselves. Also, despite the fact that the coroner was adamant that he was 100% sure that this body that was found in the first fire was that of Clarence Roberts, the body that was discovered in the garage had blood type AB, where it was pretty much a known fact that Clarence Roberts' blood type was B. But despite this fact, the coroner stuck to that, that this body that was found in the first fire was Clarence Roberts. So obviously something was going down at the coroner's office or something else was going on and they were both the body of Clarence Roberts, but we'll get into that. So now we're going to talk about a little bit of where the theory that the body that was in the first fire actually was not Clarence Roberts. Obviously, that would have been highly speculated after the second fire when his body was found yet again, but this theory and the rumors of this theory started to speculate way before the second fire even happened. Allegedly, two days before the first fire, Clarence Roberts was seen in Morgantown taking a homeless man out for lunch. He had actually offered this homeless man jobs in the Roberts home, doing odd jobs here and there for cash. And I guess that he offered the homeless man to stay with them while he was doing odd jobs in their home until he got on his feet or something along those lines. During this lunch though, this homeless man started convulsing and clearly having some kind of attack and complaining that he was in pain, at which time Clarence Roberts was seen offering to take this man to a hospital or doctor. After the first fire, news of this encounter got to police pretty quickly and so they started to investigate to see if this homeless man actually did exist and if Clarence had brought him in for any kind of medical treatment. So they checked all of the hospitals and doctor's offices in the area trying to find some record of this homeless man or asking if anybody had seen Clarence Roberts bringing in a homeless man or a wealthier man bringing in a homeless man in case the people didn't know Clarence Roberts. But unfortunately, they couldn't find any information on this and no record of any man checking another man into a hospital or doctor's office or anything like that was ever discovered by police. This is where the theories and speculations and rumors that Clarence had faked his own death really came from. It was rumored that Clarence had killed this homeless man two days before the fire and then planted his body in the garage in place of his own. It was thought that Clarence had placed the gun near the homeless man's body in hopes to kind of make it look as if he had started a fire and then shot himself. And it was also believed that Clarence watched from a hiding place while the garage burned, while the authorities found the body, just to kind of confirm that they actually would think that he was dead. But again, there was no bullet wounds found within the body, so that doesn't really like, I mean, Clarence must have been not thinking correctly, we'll go with that, it's a little bit more of a politer term, to not think that the coroner's office or investigators or police would notice that there wasn't a bullet wound in the body that was discovered in the fire in the garage. 
I mean, maybe he was thinking that the body would have burned enough that they wouldn't have been able to tell, but I just think that that isn't thinking things fully through if that really was his plan. Now backtracking a little bit to just after the first fire when Geneva had moved into her new home. So again, she really cut off all ties with most of her friends and the people that she knew in the town just because a lot of speculations were going around and a lot of really nasty rumors. So my assumption there is that she probably didn't want to involve herself with those people. But many of her neighbors reported seeing a strange man kind of hanging around her house. They said they never talked to this man. He always seemed to not want to interact with the neighbors and he always seemed like he was kind of hiding and they never really got a good look at him, but there always seemed to be this strange man around his house who people speculated that they thought could have been Clarence Roberts even before the second fire. People also started to rumor the fact that Geneva didn't ever really drink before the first fire. She was never much of a drinker, but after the first fire, she was seen quite often buying copious amounts of alcohol. And people think that maybe Clarence Roberts was hiding out in his wife's home and that she was getting alcohol for him and things like that. Um, I definitely think that's a possibility. I'm not discrediting that at all, but I also think that you kind of need to entertain the fact that this woman has had a very hard time as of lately. Her family went into extreme debt. They lost everything. She lost her house. She had to get a job. She lost her husband. And during hard times like that, a lot of people do resort to drinking to kind of calm their nerves. So I'm also thinking that that could be a theory as to why she started buying alcohol. Um, not that I'm discrediting the first theory, but I definitely think that that also could have played a role in that part of the case. Of course, after the second fire, when Clarence Roberts' body was found for a second time, that kind of confirms to authorities and people in the town that the rumors that were speculating about the first fire weren't just rumors and that they were actually true. However, people weren't satisfied with Clarence Roberts being deceased in either of the fires and rumors started to speculate again that he had actually faked his death twice and this was not his body that was found in the second fire either. But authorities do believe that the second body that was discovered in the second fire was in fact that of Clarence Roberts. They do however believe that the fire was started intentionally. Geneva was found in her bed and Clarence was found in the room next to where Geneva was sleeping. And there were burn fragments that were believed to have been from Clarence leading from the bed where Geneva was sleeping down the hallway to the back door of the house and then back inside to where Clarence's body was discovered. It was speculated that after Clarence Roberts had faked his own death the first time, he had ran out of money and places to stay, so he secretly moved back in with his wife. It was speculated at this time that maybe Geneva and Clarence had committed suicide in hopes that their children would get their insurance money, but in court it was determined that Geneva was murdered by Clarence, who had, I guess, hoped to have gotten her insurance money. He had set the house on fire while she was in it and then accidentally got caught in the home. That was what the court had ruled. Some people, however, do believe that the second fire was not started by Clarence Roberts at all, and that it was possibly started by somebody who maybe wanted revenge on Clarence and knew that he was within the home and that Geneva was hiding him. I'm not really sure what kind of toll him faking his death the first time took on the city, but I know that people get really, really rallied up about things like that, so maybe somebody was just super, super angry about Clarence faking his own death and decided that he was going to get what he deserved and what he had done to the homeless man. I mean, I guess that would probably be what people would be so angry about because obviously Clarence Roberts would have killed somebody and put them in his place in the first fire if it was in fact his body found in the second fire. There isn't too much on this theory, but another theory, again, is that some people believe that neither the body in the first fire or the second fire belonged to Clarence Roberts and that he had actually faked his death two times. But since this case, since the first fire and the second fire, Clarence Roberts is now known as the man who died twice. Although that is a little misleading and that is why going into this case I thought that it was going to be about something completely different. But after I started researching it I was still really really interested in it and I wanted to do a video on it for you guys even though I thought it was going to be something completely different. 
But guys, that brings us to the end of this video. Again, I just want to apologize that it was a little bit shorter, but if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below what you'd like to see in my future videos, and don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos from me. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys!